In this video, I want to walk you through the hands-on portion of the exam prep guide for the Tableau Desktop Specialist Certification. Tableau provides great resources if you're planning to take the certification exam, and their exam prep guide already has sample questions and it also has the solutions at the back. But sometimes it's different to read the solution and to see how the solution has been derived. I hope you'll find this useful. Before we go through the actual walkthrough, let's have a look at the exam prep guide that you can find in the Tableau website. Tableau's exam guides are pretty comprehensive. It walks you through what the exam is, the awarded credentials, the target audience, additional learning resources, and also the time format and the content. For this particular exam, there is a time limit. It's 60 minutes, mostly multiple choice and multiple response questions, and a lot of the answers you're going to derive by doing hands-on work. There are 30 questions, and this is automatically scored. So you will know right away the moment you submit the exam if you've passed or you've failed. For this particular exam, the passing score is 70%. Tableau is also fairly detailed as far as the skills that are being measured when you take any of their certification exams. So for the Tableau Desktop Specialist exam, you need to be familiar with a lot of the foundational skills like how to connect to a data source, how to modify data connections, how to create different kinds of charts in order to answer questions that they pose. So for example, creating bar charts, line charts, scatter plots, how to add filters, and how to create some basic dashboards and add interactivity in them. Some additional skills that are measured, dimensions and measures, discrete and continuous fields. I do have a video on these basic concepts. You may find them useful. Aggregation. Another key component in a lot of the Tableau certification exams is timeliness. You need to be able to manage your time. You need to know how to prioritize the time and how much time you're going to allocate for certain types of questions. To start the hands-on questions, please download the Excel file that can be found with the exam prep guide. The first hands-on question, which is question number six, using stocks 2010 to 2013 table, create a chart to see monthly change in volumes of stocks beginning of 2010 to the end of 2013. The question is all about two consecutive months that saw the least fluctuation in increase or decrease. So let's connect to the Excel file first. Let's drag this over to Tableau. For this question, it's asking us to use stocks 2010 to 2013. So let's drag this over. Let's create a brand new sheet. So for this particular question, it's asking for monthly change, which suggests that we need some kind of a time series graph. I'm going to right click, drag, date, choose continuous month. And from here, we're also looking at volumes of stocks and we have a measure for volume. So let's just drag that over to rows. Now there's a couple ways we can answer this. The suggested solution actually shows you that visually we can see the one that is pretty flat, which means there is not a lot of change from the previous month. For this particular data set, we could probably see that because we don't have a lot of data points and we may be okay with it. But I'd like to show you a different way of answering this particular question. This second way, however, uses table calculations. So if you haven't encountered table calculations yet, I will have a video on that. But for now, I'm gonna show you how it could work. Let's click on your measure. On the dropdown, you are going to find a quick table calculation option in here. And we are looking for percent difference because we're looking at the least fluctuation. So from here, quick table calculation, percent difference. We can change the mark type to bar, it makes it a little bit easier to see what the changes are. And what we could do is we could show the filter for the sum of volume that has the table calculation. If we show this filter, I'm just gonna drag this over to the middle area. And from here, by process of elimination, we can start narrowing down what is being shown on screen. So for example, if we're looking at minus 5% to positive 5%, 0 0.05, then we can see some of the bars that are falling within this range. And there is one really obvious one. This is April 2012, which means the change from the previous month of March all the way to April 2012 is the least. 
and we can see from our original graph that it actually did not change as much. March 2012, about 4 million. April 2012, also around that 4 million mark. This way that I've shown you using table calculations will be helpful if you have more data points. If you can't look at the trends one by one and if it's not very obvious where that pattern is. So the answer for number six is letter B, March 2012 to April 2012. Question seven, using stocks 2010 to 2013 table, create a cross tab showing the sum of volume per company per year and then add grand totals to the view. What was the total volume for Apple in 2013 and the total volume for Apple for 2010 through 2013 respectively? So there's a few things in here. It looks like we need company, we need year, and we also just need to look at Apple. So let's add company. Let's drag over year. By default, your date will be discrete. Let's double click on volume. And from here in the analytics tab, let's double click on totals. And we're really just looking at Apple. So right click on Apple and keep only. So for the answer, we are looking at 2013 values first, which is about 25 billion. And the total volume from 2010 to 2013 is 127 billion. So the answer for question seven is letter A. Question eight, using stocks 2010 to 2013, create a chart that shows percent difference in volume for each company by year and quarter. How many quarters did Biogen IDEC show a positive percent difference in volume? So in here, we're still looking at table calculation. We're still looking at percent difference in volume. We're also looking at it by year and quarter. So you can choose to use discrete date or continuous date. The question also suggests we need to have a filter for this particular company and for positive percent difference only. I will right click drag date, choose continuous date, but this time around, I'm going to choose continuous quarter. Fifth from the bottom. Let's take volume, drag that to rows. On the drop down, quick table calculation, percent difference. I'm gonna change the mark type to bar. I will right click on company, show the filter, and I'm only going to leave Biogen IDEC. I'm just going to move this filter over. Since we want only positive changes, I'm also going to show the filter for the sum of volume that has the table calculation. So drop down, show filter. And from here, I'm going to move this over again. Because we want positive changes, I'm going to change the minimum value to just zero. It looks like there are six bars in here. Instead of counting, we can also look at the number of marks that are being shown at the bottom of your screen. Yet another way is going to the analysis menu at the top, view data, and this also shows us the actual numbers for each mark that is being shown on screen. So the answer for question eight is letter D, six. Question nine, union the stocks 2010 to 2013 and stocks 2014 tables, and then create a chart showing average close price by year and quarter for each company from 2010 to 2014. How many quarters was Amazon's average closing price over 300? For this question, we need to create a new connection to our Excel file because this one requires a union. So let's drag our Excel file over. And from here, we're looking at stocks 2010 to 2013. And we want to add or union stocks 2014. Now in here, be very careful. Make sure that when you drag this over, you're dragging it over right underneath until it says union. Otherwise, when you see this line, it's actually called a noodle. It's a relationship in Tableau. So let's drag this so that it's union. Union means you're stacking all the records on top of each other. So what you end up with is a longer data set. If you wanted to double check, you can hover over this logical table and it will tell you that this is composed of two tables. Double click this table to see the unions. So in this case, edit union, we know that this is composed of both the 2010 to 2013 and stocks 2014. Let's create a new sheet. This question requires another time series graph. You can choose to use continuous dates or discrete dates. Both will work. So by quarter and by year for each company. And it looks like we're also still filtering by a specific company, in this case, Amazon, and we're looking at the average closing price. I'm going to right-click drag date onto columns, 
choose continuous quarter. I'll drag company to rows and then close to rows. In here, we're looking at average instead of sum. So on the drop down, instead of sum, we're going to change this to average. We're going to keep only Amazon and we can add a filter on the average close. So on the drop down, show filter. And we're really only interested if the closing price is over 300. So we can set the minimum value for your filter as 300. And from here, we can change the mark to bar. And from here, you can see that there's five bars. And you can also check at the bottom of your screen, there's five marks. So the answer for question nine is C. There are five quarters where Amazon's average closing price was over 300. For question 10, Using the flights table, create a bar chart showing the average of minutes of delay per flight broken down by carrier name and filtered by state to only show Minnesota. What was the average minutes of delay per flight for United in Minnesota? Let's create a new connection. This time around, we're using flights in a new sheet. So in this case, we need carrier name. We're looking at only Minnesota, so we can drag state onto filters and look for MN. Select only that. Let's drag minutes of delay per flight onto columns. Change this to average. In this case, I'm actually going to copy average minutes of delay onto label. I'm going to set this one to highlighted and I will add a highlighter to carry your name. So in here, we're looking at United. So for United, the answer is 62.98. So the answer for question 10 is letter C. So those are all the practical questions for the desktop specialist exam. I hope you found that useful. If there's other practical walkthroughs that you're interested in seeing in this channel, please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.